Those Were the Days is filmed before a live internet audience. And welcome back to Those Were the Days, the show that walks down the road of TV nostalgia, sometimes all dressed up in costume and going from TV house to TV house to see which ones still give us the best candy and which ones keep giving us the smallest little nuggets that used to be a full-size candy bar. Then we come back here and share what all kinds of treats we got. I'm your host this week, Audie, and we're diving into a new topic for the month and a timely one at that, Halloween episodes of TV shows. Now, before we get into the show we watched, I ask that you all rise as I introduce my fellow honorable podcasters. First, the honorable Judge Stephen Adams. This uh, this show is not actually about court or court cases or people or court. It's not a TV court show. I was. This is not Judge Judy. This is a comedy. <laughs> Boy, was I surprised. <laughs> Next, the Honorable Judge Amy Frost. I like to think that Harry Anderson's character from Cheers and Harry Anderson's character from Night Court are the same character. He's just really just moved up in the world. And last but never least, the Honorable Judge Travis Crawford. If you're going to name a giant character with an incredible intellect uh, who is also a complete simpleton, um, the best thing to do is just take random names like Aristotle and Nostradamus and then give him a nickname like Bull. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's right, friends. We're finally going to talk about Night Court. <laughs> I did it. Yep. It came yeah, on the TV. Did. Like, oh, no, I did. did. Uh -huh. Mm hmm. And as we are wont to do, let's go ahead and see what everyone's history with Night Court is. Hey, let's start with Amy. Yeah, I love Night Court. I love everything in night about Night Court. Um, big fan of Harry Anderson, obviously. Um, this episode had a few cringy moments, but not. I, I don't. I didn't think they were beyond the of the times cringy moments. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I loved this show. And that's one of those, that was like activated like a sleeper agent <laughs> when that theme song came on. I was like, oh no. Uh, yeah. When <laughs> that Great. first bass hit, do, do, do. Yep. yep. <laughs> I was exactly. like, get the popcorn, it's time. <laughs> yeah, no, big fan. Nice. Uh, Steven, what about you? I have heard Night Court before, but literally thought Night Court was a show like Judge Joe Brown or <laughs> like really? I had no idea it was a sitcom. Nothing really? in my universe ever taught me it was a sitcom. And the oh, thing wow. that blew my mind the oh most was gosh. I knew I knew almost every face on this show from something Aww. else. Yeah. Which just <laughs> made I was like, I know that guy. I know that guy. I know that guy. It's just a constant. Uh -huh. I was just Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at the TV like the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. I, I can't tell you how big of a shock it was to go from thinking I'm about to watch some sort of strange comedic version of Judge Joe Brown wow. to know an actual sitcom. Just like I was, man, that was a delightful. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad. All right, yeah. Travis, what about you? I love Night Court. I, I have not watched it in way too long, yeah. and mm -hmm. I'm going to be watching more. I'll already say that right now. Yeah. I, I like The memories came flooding back. I'm pretty sure that uh, Marky Post is the reason why I have a thing for short haircuts <laughs> on, on women. Like I'm, I, This just reminded me of that. But like everybody in it is just amazing um yeah. and I absolutely loved it yeah i'm the same way i remember watching it like crazy and just everything about it um was just so good and watching it again it was just like yep this is night court yep i miss this good lord mm -hmm. um so 
Night Court was a sitcom on NBC that ran from January of 1984 until May of 1992. So running nine seasons with 193 episodes. Nice. Um, it was created by Reinhold Weege, or Weege, I forget how to pronounce his name, um, who actually previously wrote for Barney Miller and MASH. Um, but this is the one show he really created. Uh, the show was set in the night shift of a Manhattan criminal court presided over by a young Harry T. Stone who had a penchant for magic tricks and a love of Mel Torme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so there were which few... I did. I read that Mel Torme said that after the show debuted, he noticed his audience starting to skew younger and younger. <laughs> 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 and kind of credits Night Court for sort of some of his resurgence. Amazing. <laughs> That's hilarious. So um, now uh, over the seasons, there were a few cast changes over the years. Um, mm -hmm. But the episode we're talking about tonight, this is the main cast most people are familiar with yeah. and remember. This was the main yeah. staple cast that stuck around for the most time. Um, so we had Harry Anderson as Judge Harry T. Stone. Um, and Harry Anderson, before all this, was more of a magician first. Yes. And then got into acting and people were like, hey, Harry, you're really good. Keep doing this. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so he definitely was had a few very memorable um, episodes on Cheers that yeah. really got him into it. And then he, he was cast in this. Uh, then you have John Laroquette as assistant <sighs> DA Dan Fielding. Um, I love him. Yeah. The cringiest of cringe. Yes. But yes. Lord, he ate it up. Lord, he ate yeah, it up. Yeah, but he, and he's supposed to be like, like, right. Yeah. He's absolutely meant to be that way. Yeah. So that part was I thought, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. I thought it was crazy. I was reading, he won Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Show Emmy four years in a row for this. Wow. And after winning it four years in a row, it was like, okay, just, to, I don't need any more. Don't, don't take, yeah. don't put my name in there anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, which I, just think it was was crazy but like yeah four years in a row and he is so good yeah. as dan he so is then we had marky post as the public defender christine sullivan mm -hmm. we had charles robinson as the court clerk mac Thanks. robinson i love um, him so much yeah mm -hmm. he's mm -hmm. great yes um just him with harry just right there i all the so time. to be to be honest harry i'd looked at him and i was like i know this guy what do I know him from? And he bears a striking resemblance to the senator from X Men who was like, "These mutants, we need to find them." You know what I mean? Like yeah. he really does. Like put bit. them Bruce, next to each other. Yeah, Harry, Harry Anderson and Bruce Davison do look a lot alike. Mm -hmm. They favor, right? So I was yeah. like, "Oh mm -hmm. dang!" But I was, I, and then I looked it up. I was like, "That's not him." Where else do I know him from? Dave's World. Dave yes. Barry. Uh -huh. That's the yep. show we watched yep. every week. And I was like, that's where I know this guy from. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And he, that was a great run on that show, too. Oh, so um, good. Uh, two others we had in this episode. Richard Mull as bailiff. Nostradamus <laughs> Bull Shannon. <laughs> I love him. Bull. Yeah. I there. <clears throat> we'll get to it. But there was a moment that killed me with Bull. <laughs> I mean, there, there's a lot of them, but several, one in particular several, yeah. just broke me. Um, <laughs> man. And just knowing if you know what kind of actor Richard Maul is and knowing what he's doing here, mm. it's amazing. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't realize he, he only character. passed away last year. Yeah. yeah. He just passed away yeah. last year. Also, uh, and, like they had to cast somebody taller than Harry Anderson and Dan Larroquette, yeah. who are six mm -hmm. foot three and six foot four. Oh, yeah. Right, so they <laughs> they needed somebody tall, so they get Richard Mall, who is yeah. six foot eight. Mm -hmm. Wow! And then rounding out the cast, we had Marsha Warfield as bailiff Roz Russell, the <sighs> take no crap from anybody person on the show. She's so good. She is. Roz so good. was great. And Stephen, she was actually the third uh, bailiff. Yeah, because they had oh. the, the the first season, the first two seasons, they had an older uh, woman. Mm -hmm. And then she passed away. And so they cast a different uh, actor and she was also older and then she passed away. And so then they recast <laughs> uh, with yeah. a much younger actor. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we've learned our lesson. Charm and it worked out. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then, um, you know, 
there's not a whole lot of information about the making of the show out there. Um, the only other thing I found was talking about the very memorable, as we introduced, theme song. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a very jazz-influenced, bass-heavy theme composed by Jack Elliott, who was a well-known TV and film composer at the time. Um, and it's funny, the closing theme, you know, it's just a variation of it. And then at the end of the theme, there's some stuff. And then Reinhold Weege's, um logo comes up and there's a very distinct laugh over that logo if you watch to the end and see that and heard that and it's funny because um it's a laugh that's actually heard in the studio audience and people were like who is this some people thought it was mel blank because he's been on the show here and there some people thought it might have been harry anderson turns out it was chuck ouija reinhold's father who attended nearly every taping of the show in person <laughs> until Reinhold left the show after season six. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So. That's yeah. so cool. So that brings us to the episode. Season seven, episode four, come back to the five and dime, Stephen King, Stephen King. <laughs> um, and if you're wondering where that title comes from, it's based off a 1982 movie called Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, which is about... <laughs> a movie about a James Dean fan club that meets on the 20th anniversary of his death. Oh, all right. <laughs> cool. So Stephen actually, King's not dead, but that's no. okay. I think Stephen King was just trying to do the Halloween part. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But otherwise it, it, there's a connection there. We'll get into it. <laughs> so we've got the cold open where um, bull is bringing kids from the children's center into Harry's office, trick or treat. And, you know, he does the usual thing. Do you like vegetables? No. <laughs> that was good. I'm going to use then, that uh, when they come to my uh-huh. door this year. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. He gives them candy. Um, this was before the candy bars were super, like, tiny one-inch candy bars. Yeah, so they were decent squares. size. Yeah. He gives all the kids candy, starts to walk away, and Bull's like, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Which I was totally expecting. And um, yeah, so um, Bull has a trash bag. And yeah. Harry goes to give him candy. And it's like, um, Bull, there's a rib roast in your bag. <laughs> 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 and I love it. He's like, yeah, I got it from the butcher. The kids all got cutlets. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, writing, so the writing of this so show good. was yes. so good. Oh, my gosh. And he's like, let's go to the corner. He's got a bit of honey. That was the best part. Come on, yep. kids. The corner has mm-hmm. <laughs> a bit of honey. Dude, I've Which, been there. I'm just going to say also, I unironically love bit of honey. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. See, Stephen, this is why we're friends. Yeah, this is where there are multiple old people in this room right now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I too love having my teeth yanked out. It's great because yeah. it's got, it's good. It's got the real stuff. Mm-hmm. Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, a bit of honey you bite into, and you're like, should I try to open my mouth, or is that going to yank a filling out? I don't know. No, We're just going to let it melt in there. Yeah. <laughs> that feeling's gone. Um, leave it. Um, so then we get, uh, you know, um, Miss Sullivan and Mac coming in, you know, looking around. Harry's office is completely decorated for Halloween, like all over the place. You know, Yeah, because like, Harry's yeah. just a big kid. He really oh, yeah. is. Like. He does the magic stuff all the time. Steven, when you watch more, you'll see. He brings out the magic tricks all the time, Um, which is why things happen in this episode the way they do. Um, (laughs) Because when he's like, you know, it brings out the kid in all of us, and Christine's like, some more than others. (laughs) And I love you saying I'm obsessed, and Max like, you carved the Marx Brothers. (laughs) (laughs) That was so good. It was good. And then we get Dan coming in. You know, telling us he wants to get things on the road and get moving, get going, because he has a party to get to uh, of the adult variety, uh, where everyone (laughs) apparently is dressed as a sexual legend. You know, Casanova, Cleopatra. I, of course, am going as myself. (laughs) (laughs) There's two sides of Halloween. There's Halloween when you're a kid and Halloween when you're a grown up, and they're very different. Yes, they are. Then he tries to uh, prank, you know, Mac and Christine with the candy bucket and tries <laughs> to prank them with a little spider dropping down from the door. It's so good because it's yeah. so floppy. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, then, no. A oh. scary spider. 
they're not going to give him the satisfaction of having no <laughs> we're not going to lean into this for right. you right because they're used so to good. him so they're expecting it they yep. leave and then uh our buddy art uh who i had completely mm-hmm. forgotten about art yeah mm-hmm. completely forgotten about him so that was just mind blowing to to have him in there yeah he comes in you know he's talking to harry and harry's telling him about his pet bat tito that's a and, good uh, name yeah good takes name. the uh the <laughs> sheet off the cage and i love that harry's not looking at nurse like oh an invisible bat <laughs> harry's like no it's a regular oh no the bat has escaped and art's like i'm on it we'll find it uh <laughs> and then we cue theme song um come back that's a banger of a theme song by the way never yeah. heard oh, it yes. before yeah. and i was like oh this is the 80s or 90s yeah. whatever and it's great oh yeah this is one of those like most remembered theme songs ever yeah um, it's one that i've constantly seen people re-edit other tv shows as an 80s tv show to this theme song we yeah. could do a whole theme on you know great theme songs of classic uh-huh. tv oh sure um so we come back harry's uh talking to everybody about trying to catch the bat um let's see i think was Roz here at the time because she's like yeah. just dismissive and like what the heck are we doing here yeah harry brings out a bat whistle that apparently will somehow attract the bat blows <laughs> on it okay. blows on it and is telling them you know art's like that's a broken whistle. He's like, no, it's a high frequency whistle that only animals can hear. <laughs> and as soon as he says that, bull comes running in. Like, and that's what broke me. Uh-huh. He, he comes oh, charging great. around the corner, and I lost yeah. it. I, like it a was great so good. Dane puppy. Uh huh. Because <laughs> it's it, it's everything in Richard Mall's performance there, mm-hmm. the face and everything. And he's like, "Well, what are you doing here? I I." I suddenly started drooling and had this pull to come to this spot <laughs> it was so, it that, was so and then, good and then Roz is like well just be glad he's housebroken <laughs> that's great like they are a great duo in this show Roz and bull together mm-hmm. oh perfect they're, um, they're so perfect then we cut to the next scene where bull is sitting with the kids in the courtroom and they offer him another piece of gum <laughs> And his mouth is apparently full of it. Apparently 152 pieces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he just pulls out this so chunk. It's like, it's like a cue ball uh, yeah. size <laughs> chunk of gum. Yeah. He's like, well, we'll go for the world record later and just slaps it. <laughs> he just jams it Against on the, the bench. On the, yeah. <laughs> the bench. <laughs> so gross like that's yeah. one of those things that grosses me out is anything that has been in your mouth should stay in there or i'm gonna throw mm. up and that was like <laughs> that was it i was like uh, this is terrible yeah. <laughs> well especially when they're like close up on his face and you see his cheeks you're like what's and then when it's actually comes out you're like oh dear lord yeah it was awesome it's terrible it was awesome yeah so uh then harry meets the kids because their bus is late so they're gonna hang out a little bit um, he pulls one of his little pranks on them, scaring them like crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, scaring one in particular crazy enough that he needs to go change his pants. Uh, Which poor... pays off so well. Oh, later. yeah. Poor little Daniel Boone. Mm-hmm. He's got to go change his pants. <laughs> and then we finally get our first uh, actual case of the evening. Uh, where we've got a disturbing the peace by a Miss Madeline, Madame Rochelle, the affordable exorcist, <laughs> which I loved her tagline. You got a spirit, I'll disappear it. I it wrote that down good. too. It was it wonderful. Was very good. Um, I'm going to apparently... use that in my Halloween decorations somewhere. I don't know mm. where yet, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. So apparently she had an issue with uh, some soup or something. You know, a meatball was haunted, so she had to do something. Um, so... Uh, they decide they're probably just going to send her to Bellevue. To be yeah, all right. So, seen. so this part was a little, it was a little cringy. It was a little much, and it was a, a not kind take on mental illness. <laughs> mm-hmm. But no, I didn't think it was like out of line for the time. But I did go, oh, oh, how I we've mean, grown. Yeah, and the yeah, yeah. 
I mean, now, of now jokes she would have just been make making now. a TikTok. So, <laughs> right. You know. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we'll get to it at the end, but they kind of redeem it. It comes around. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, at the time when, you know, you think somebody's not all there, what are you going to do with them? You know, you got to do something. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's better than just throwing them in the, um, you know, in jail for no good reason. So, mm-hmm. um, so then we get, you know, uh, Mac telling him that there's going to be a little delay. The guys in booking were bobbing for apples. <laughs> and I love this because it's so unprofessional. They didn't invite me. <laughs> so um art comes in real quick says he's got to go home do whatever so he leaves um roz comes in says she's still looking for the bat use the whistle apparently she caught eight rats <laughs> six mice and bull showed up again <laughs> I love that they early on with the bat thing, they said that he had all his shots because all I could yep. think about was like the knowledge of bats now is like, oh, if you've seen a bat, you have to go get a rapey yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I'm like, uh, oh, no, no, no. good. Because everyone there uh, needs a. That was like right up in front. Yeah. Right like, up glad front. they said that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one told my grandma that when I was a kid and the bat was in the house, but you know, it's probably. Yeah. I'm fine now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky me. I mean, we made he it. didn't die. So, no. you know. Right. Fortunately, yeah. We had no death here. All right. Then they, uh, Mac and Christine are saying Harry needs to get something out of his desk. There's something in there that he should have. He goes to get it, and they prank him this time with oh. cans of snakes just popping out of the desk <laughs> like crazy. And so much so that he just rips the desk. You know, that shelf right out of the desk. <laughs> and um, in doing that, they find an old, old case file. Apparently from 1939 for a Ray Heston. I love this um, idea, by the way, because how many times have you had that drawer where something like slipped off the top mm-hmm. and into the back? Mm-hmm. And then you oh, find yeah. it accordioned up like months later. <laughs> You're like, yeah. oh, that's where that yeah. went. This is such uh, a plausible thing to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 The, the only thing that makes it not plausible is anybody who cares about continu- continuity within the show. Because a few episodes before somewhere, Harry's entire desk was destroyed. So this wouldn't oh. have actually <laughs> Oh, continuity in a sitcom. Like, Oh, right. I'm, exactly. Right. Nobody's you really know. caring that much or paying attention that much. No, no. There so. has to be intent, like a to be continued or something uh, for us to care that much. So, and right about this time, uh, Bull comes back with the kid who uh, apparently Bull got him some uh, spare pair of his pants to wear. <laughs> <laughs> this was so much, This is what broke me. This is what I thought you were going to say, Travis. This is what the kid's got his uh, head. <laughs> that was the second the best one. So that part was so good. So it's really funny because there is, my mom has a book. Um, I know she's, I can't think of her name. But it's this whole book of like Halloween costumes and like most like so many of my really amazing Halloween costumes as a kid were made out of this book. And I remember there was like a pair of the same suit, like so many of them had like pun names that I did not appreciate as a child. <laughs> but it was a pair of a pair of the same suit. And it was you bought a big suit and you put two little children in it, one uh-huh. as the pair of pants and one as the big coat. And that was all I could think of, but it's so good because and his hat, his little yes, his little, yeah, his his little cream skin cap, cap sticking well, out of the top his of face it, face through the yeah through the, uh, zipper. the zipper. That's so good. <laughs> Damn being like he is gonna have nightmares tonight. <laughs> uh, and then the little, you know leads the rest of the kids out. The bus is there, you know, just telling them now if you think you're going to get sick remember to take your mask off first that is quality quality mm-hmm. advice solid mm-hmm. so and then again in this uh span of waiting we have a lady cleopatra showing up to stop, <laughs> talk to dan uh in your uh 
stereotypical adult Halloween costume. So good. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) you know, does this make you think of Egypt? (laughs) To which Dan is like, certainly the pyramids. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. So Um, good. You know, and she's definitely, you know, saying you better come to the party. Um, so Dan is like ready to go, just yeah. ready. He's just like, let's go. Um, <laughs> let's get this over with. Let's just call it a night. We don't need to do anything else. Yeah, it was was over. Mm-hmm. I got other stuff to do. And then during all this, Mac has actually been researching uh, Ray Heston, and um, it turns out he was never charged. Back in the day, because he died in the courtroom. <laughs> and then things start going crazy in the courtroom. Um, and they mention Heston Street. And just the mere mention of Heston Street, the lights go out and stuff's going around. Um, and then things just, they keep saying it and things just keep going crazier and crazier to which they all just run out of the room well and the affordable exorcist is uh sitting over there seeing, being like see see yeah uh-huh. mm-hmm. Told yeah. You. yeah madame rochelle's just like yep yep so now we're back in harry's office hunkering down um wondering what's going on uh why there's an indoor tornado um <laughs> dan's just kind of you know, you know, it's oh, it's harmless, you know, like that hole in the ozone thing, <laughs> <laughs> which really brought me back. Just talking yeah. about the ozone. Oh man, yeah. I remember when that was the the biggest problem we faced, uh-huh. you know. So, um, and they keep talking about how weird it is. Lights are on everywhere but in the courtroom, and the temperature has dropped some 20 degrees, but um, only in the courtroom, but mm-hmm. only yeah. in the courtroom. Um, Madame Rochelle is in earshot and is, you know, as the bailiff's taking her wherever, he's like, you know, you know, give me a chance and I can help you out. 80 bucks and I can get rid of it. <laughs> Dan questions her expertise, to which she immediately is like, then how do I know as a child you were called Potato Face? To which Dan immediately is like, how, <laughs> how did, did you know? know? Who told His you reaction. That? Three rooms for 129 mm-hmm. or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was... It's good to have a. Which, I mean, uh, that's a big room, so that's that's a good deal. Quite yeah, a good deal. <laughs> I mean, by square footage, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And then he's like, "I have no idea what she's talking about." And they're like, "Fine, <laughs> let's do it." Um, she's like, "Okay, let's do a séance ex- exorcism." And I love Christine here, talking about her experiences. <laughs> he's like, "I tried a Ouija board to find a boyfriend one time, and it came out blith." <laughs> that was great. Um, I also like Dan calling um, her a swap meet swami. Yeah. <laughs> that was very good. Yep. yep. So, um, Madam Christine needs darkness. So they turn off the lights. Um, everybody holds hands. She's saying not a peep. And then one of Harry's pranks goes off again and scares the bejesus out of everybody. <laughs> that's me that's mine that's me Uh (laughs) sorry sorry um they calm back down get back into it um madame rochelle's like i feel the presence of an entity where the dead walk to which dan goes must work at the dmv (laughs) 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 gotta get a dmv joke in there such good jokes Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh so um you know then she keeps going you know spirit of discontent let us know you, your travail um and then she speaks to the voice of voice of ray heston apparently um very very deep mm-hmm. guttural voice mm-hmm. max like that ghost needs a throat lozenge <laughs> yeah it was very growly and then uh from that she small lady writes down on a piece of paper um J U S T I C E. And they're like, just ice. <laughs> Crack me up like a so blend much. of margarita mix. Just ice. <laughs> That's awesome. And then 
Harry's the one who gets it. He's like, oh, he mean he needs justice. And I love Dan's reaction. It's like, oh, couldn't have wanted blood or revenge. Not something that would take so damn long. Yeah. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they decide they're going to reopen the case and try it. And that will bring him justice. Um, to which Mac is like, next Halloween, I'm calling in sick. Mm-hmm. Smart. Um, then we get a short little thing about Roz in the cafeteria. Um, we didn't get much time in here, Stephen, but the cafeteria is another frequent spot in the show. Okay. Yeah. Things happen. Um, <laughs> I love she's about to get the bat and then Bull's right there. Hi, Roz! <laughs> <laughs> um, and she misses. That goes flying. Uh, then well, he back. yells. She he yells She tells him to be quiet she's going to get the B-A-T. Uh-huh. And then he's trying to figure out what B-A-T is standing in for. Uh-huh. And he's like, oh, the bat? And then she misses and it right. goes flying and everybody in the cafeteria screams, screams and runs away. Uh-huh. The B-A-T? B-A-T. The bat. Right. So everybody else is about to go into the courtroom to figure out what's going on. Uh, then they smell something. Um, you know, what smell? What's that smell? It's foul. It's unholy. And Mac's like, it's me. He's wearing a ring of garlic. Yep. Yeah. Get the garlic necklace. Man, mm-hmm. that's vampires, man. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I kept waiting for them to make that joke. Yeah. And yeah. Nobody did. yeah. Vampires. <laughs> so he's anyways. not superstitious, but he's wearing it, you know, just in case. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, they, they do the trial for Ray Heston. Apparently, um, it was a public nuisance thing. Um, Apparently, he set fire to a bag of dog poop. <laughs> and that's what he was arrested for. Uh-huh. To which yeah, Mac is just like, Ray, get an afterlife, man. <laughs> um, and Harry's just like, okay, fine. Yeah, you know, simple little thing. Let's drop the charges. And Dan, for whatever reason, is just like, no, if we're going to do this, we're going to freaking do this. Yeah, he's already, oh, his night wait. is already ruined. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. fine. <laughs> we're going to do You want to do it? Let's do it. Yeah. So, um, to which Dan goes through a laundry list of prior charges of him being arrested for doing all kinds of things. I especially liked when he tried to TP the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. Among many. So, uh, after going through all that, Harry's like, okay, well, you know what? In that case, then I have no, uh, no other choice but to find you guilty uh, with a sentence in charge of $50, which back then comes to about 250 Which is false. I fact-checked this. Uh, the According to the inflation calculator, $5.60. Oh, okay. So he yeah. gave him a break. He gave him a break. Gave him like half That's off. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had to know, because anytime someone mentions money on one of these yeah. old shows, I want to know what our what we're doing but instead of taking that and putting it in today's money i went ahead and did the whole inflation rate for what they were their yeah, time yeah, yeah, yeah. you know yeah mm-hmm. well, you gotta keep yeah. these things so you gotta know these are important <laughs> and things are still going crazy and they're like what the heck we just did this what's going on and at that point we get a piece of ventilation that just falls down in the middle of the courtroom <laughs> with our buddy art climbing out of mm-hmm Apparently, just before he left, he was trying to, uh, looking for the bat and clear the air vent and got stuck. So what was he doing this whole time? He was pounding the pipes. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and apparently, whatever he did uh, hit the lights and made them go off in the courtroom. And also, apparently, him getting stuck fed all the AC into that room. <laughs> and his butt, apparently. <laughs> to which... We're all like, oh, so this was all whatever. To which the best line from Bull. So, this whole thing was a manifestation of our collective self-induced paranoia. Because <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Bull that is the the best thing about Bull, he is the big, dim-witted, lovable giant. Uh huh. But the character also has a one eighty one IQ. Yeah. So like, he's yeah. not dumb. He's just dim-witted. Mm-hmm. But all of basically all of his intellect goes into like useless trivia. 
So he pulls that kind of stuff out all the time. Uh huh. And it's so That's, good. Sounds familiar. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a lot of that and, rattling around in here. You know, Dan being Dan is like, I didn't buy it for a minute. To which Madame Rochelle behind him just screams in that guttural voice, Field Aiden. And he immediately <laughs> jumps up into Max's arms. <laughs> <laughs> Man, everybody on that show must have been a giant because none of them look that much taller than the other. Mm-hmm. But if they, oh. Harry and, and Dan are 6'3 and 6'4, like, holy cow. Mm-hmm. Also, yeah. John Larroquette is another face I recognize from, like, a kid's movie or something, and I could not figure out what it was from. <laughs> I, oh. I really can't. Like, he was, like, the villain or, like, the bully dad or something from some movie somewhere, mm-hmm. and I don't know what it was. Or maybe I just remember him from like him running in. Maybe he was on Dave's World once or twice, and I recognize him from that. I don't know. He might have been. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, I know. But I look through his IMDb credits, and I'm like, I know you were in some like dumb kids movie somewhere at some point, (laughs) and I could not figure it out. Probably. Oh, also, um, so Richard Mall is six foot eight, right? And Bull has a girlfriend. So Bull has a girlfriend in the in the series, and uh, she was in the next episode. I started watching that one, and the actor playing her is four foot eleven. Oh my gosh! It's Ooh, so good. So them standing next to each other is great. She's like a dental hy- she's going to dental hygiene hygiene school. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so good. That's great. That's wild. So we cut back to to the courtroom. Um, Dan was was it getting into his party? So he wasn't going to make it. He was too late. The only sexual legend left will be Oscar Wilde. <laughs> that was, that was a borderline joke. It uh-huh. was really funny, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, Roz comes in and lets uh, Harry know she f- caught Tito. Um, to which he's like, how'd you do it? He's like, well, he slowed down after eating food in the cafeteria. <laughs> he's in his cage, hutched over his water dish now. <laughs> <laughs> So, and then they talk about releasing the uh, Madame Rochelle to her son and daughter instead of sending her to Bellevue. Uh, you know, kind of redeeming that plot line. Just, oh, know, sure. Getting her back to her family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was um, great. Yep. Uh, and then everybody leaves, and then Harry's just kind of there, you know, talking about how disappointed he was. Talking about, you know, ghosts only appear to guys in swamps or trailer parks in Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> That was funny. Um, you can't he... want it. Yeah. That's the whole thing about the paranormal. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. You can't want it that badly. Can't go looking so. for it. It's going to find you. Mm hmm. To which he's talking about, you know, he never stopped believing in possibilities. And then $2 falls from somewhere <laughs> onto his desk. And then he looks up. He's like, the fine was two fifty, dollars Ray. And then you get a couple quarters. <laughs> that was pretty good. So good. And that's the end of the episode. And that's how we end it. So that was Night Court. Um, so let me start with Steven, since he's the newbie. Yeah. Here. What did you think of Night Court? What, what Holy are your thoughts cow, on the show? man. How could you not love that? That had like everything you could want in a sitcom. It had the the best little ensemble cast. It had they all played a role that was particular. You know, like this is the, this is the kind of arrogant guy. This is the dumb guy. This is the comic. Like it was all, it was all there. I love that cast. Uh, everybody in it was amazing. Like, it, I just wish I had known that it was a show that was like a, it was like Cheers, but in a courtroom. Yeah. Like I just had no idea. I'd heard Night Court so many times and just immediately went, oh, that just was probably like some prime time, you know court show like judge judy or whatever and i was just way wrong in the wrongest way you could be wrong uh and i am very grateful you brought this to my attention i had a wonderful time awesome glad so yeah glad. it was fantastic all right travis i had so much fun with it i can't wait to watch more of it it's on freebie so it'll be that kind of background show the mm-hmm. only thing i wish this episode had had is Brent Spiner because he yeah. his character is such a great recurring character yeah. in this. Yeah. Um but uh you know 
outside of that, like it's just it was great. I I absolutely adore this show, and I remember now why I liked it so much because mm-hmm. it is it's just it's a perfect sitcom. Oh man, yeah, yeah. perfect. Amy, yeah, no, it was phenomenal. I'm so happy. And like Travis, like I haven't watched, like I don't, I don't remember the last time I watched Night Court. Mm-hmm. Now I'm like, why have I not been watching Night Court? What, <laughs> what am I even doing? Right. What, yeah. <laughs> well, I think because until recently it hasn't yeah, that's been true. on you probably couldn't. anywhere. Like, because oh. I've looked for it on previous times and been like, you know, trying to bring it up, and it's like there was nowhere good to watch it before. Yeah. So I think the part of it is that they've got the revived right show yeah it's mm-hmm. basically harry's daughter taking over john larroquette's in it and some of the other yeah. actors have been in there they're still around um there's a really funny well, episode of um 30 rock where uh tracy is sad because he never got like the real ending to night court <laughs> and so they like put on the real ending of night court it's real good <laughs> oh that's awesome because there was there was talk of their them doing a 10th season but yeah. And they even offered them more money, but it wasn't going to be on broadcast. It was going to go straight to syndication and they didn't want to do it. So they just decided they were done. Um, but yeah, the the revival, Larroquette is in that. And I think he and Marsha Warfield are the yep. only surviving yeah. cast members now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? Really? Harry Anderson yeah. is yeah. dead? Oh, Harry Anderson yeah. was, was like For one of the while. first ones to go. Mm-hmm. Wow. Because Marky Post and Charles Robinson both passed away in 2021. Yeah. And then Richard Mull in 2023. Yeah. But they, I just met them. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's very hard. I don't even well, have good time news to is, appreciate them. The good news is you have 100 plus episodes to watch <laughs> yes. of them. So oh, I'm almost so heartbroken right now, though. I feel like I just met and lost friends. <laughs> <laughs> like in the same 12 hours. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Dang, okay. I'm all right. I'll be That's okay. That's the perils of this mm. show. Yeah, I yeah. know, this show right? Yeah. riddled with that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they yeah. all looked fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Harry yeah. Anderson actually passed in 2018. So. Dang. Yeah. yeah. Man, all right. One Shoot. one other little fun thing. This is one of this might be my favorite bit of John Larroquette trivia just because if you know him from something like Night Court, you would never guess that his first acting credit or his first credit is for the texas chainsaw massacre oh wow but he okay. he's not he doesn't appear in it at all he just does narration for it and they brought him back for the remake in 2003 he did the narration oh, for that one too that's cool so i thought that was I, i've always liked that little bit little tidbit yeah so that was night court um did we get any response from anybody about it I got no email, um, which you should email us. Holy cow, people. Like, email's great. I get to read them. It's exciting for me. It makes me feel good. And when you don't email, I don't get to read your email, which is sad. So make <laughs> me happy and send me an email. Please, I don't even care, I don't even care if you ask, like, what our favorite food is. Just put <laughs> the email in our inbox. Those were the day show at gmail.com. Yes, definitely email us about anything. Um, yeah, you know, anything. Bring it. I'll, I'll read. Let us hear from you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, most of the social media stuff I got was the usual likes and reposts. So. Sure. Yep. I'll All take right. it. So, that was Night Court. Next week, Stephen, you're bringing us something, right? Oh, yes, I am. And much like you, I found a show that is not uh, not anywhere for a really long time and then became somewhere. Uh, so on, on re- do researching, I did find out the episode I picked um, a week ago aired in 2001, but that was 23 years ago. So we're just going to pretend that's, that's fine. fine. It's all good. No, it's yeah. fine. That's all great. Yeah, 20 we, years. Are, we are going to watch The Drew Carey Show, oh, season heck. seven, episode seven. It's Halloween, dummy. And I could not be more excited to take you all on this adventure. It's just, I might have watched it today and just decided, Uh, okay, jackpot. Uh, So, yes, we're watching it. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. Excellent. That's fair. Yeah, I'm very, very excited to talk about it. That's going to be great. 
Mm-hmm. 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 All right. It's got a special guest star in it too. Oh. Oh, yeah. hey. Who's it gonna be? We love a special Better. guest star. You're gonna love yeah, this special guest star. I'm so oh, excited. Hey. I'm gonna go watch it again right when we hang up. Uh because wow. it's just <laughs> Yeah. Flipping <That's> great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so yeah, great. viewers. Wait listeners go watch it so you can be here and and catch all the fun stuff and laugh with us as we remember yeah the drew carey for sure Mm -hmm. um now one more thing before we go amy okay take the stage as we record this it is october eve i know Mm -hmm. spooky season is upon us and if you like spooky things then you'll like ake willow if you like ake willow then you should buy the book um, mm-hmm. Pre-orders for the book are available at aquillow.com slash book. That's A-C-H-E-W-I-L-L-O-W. It's a story. It's a cozy horror story about demons and baking. And you should get in on it because it's pretty terrific. And I work really hard on it. We have our backer-only exclusive episode is getting ready to go out at some point this week. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I am so excited. com slash book. Heck yeah. Yes. Um, the Drew Carey Show is on Plex. I didn't mention that. Go to go to Plex. Plex. Okay. Plex.tv for your, okay. your Drew Perfect. Carey needs. Yeah. Sorry, I meant to say that. And I didn't. Now I did. So I corrected did. it. Got it yep. in there. Fixed it. <laughs> All right. So until next week when we watch the Drew Carey Show, that's it from us. For Amy, for Travis, and for Steven, I'm Audi. You've been listening to those Wolf or the Days, and we'll see you again next week. We'll see you in court. <laughs>